So today's video is going to be my April favorites. These were products I was loving in the month of April. And I have to be honest, I don't have that many products. I actually don't have that many makeup products. I have a lot of non-makeup favorites this month. And mainly it's because I was traveling a lot in April. I'm doing a lot more traveling in May actually. I was just pretty much using the exact same things I was using last month. I have a lot of the exact same favorites from last month, so I didn't want to repeat myself, but I also didn't want to talk about products I wasn't really loving, so this one might be a short one. I mean, who knows? I will turn these 10 products into a 40 minute video, of course. Also, I have a fake nose ring on. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably saw it weeks ago when I posted that I was wearing this while I was wearing a silver one. But I recently purchased on Amazon a bunch of fake nose rings and I've been wearing them recently and um, I don't know, I like it. Little story really quick. I've been wanting a nose ring since I was like in middle school, since like sixth grade. I've wanted one so bad. I used to put a little diamond on my nose in middle school all the time, like with crazy glue. <laughs> like I used to glue diamonds, little fake diamonds on my nose all the time. Did not look good, but I thought it did, you know, middle school. Even in high school, I really, really wanted one so bad, but my fear of getting one was always stronger. Like, there's just something about putting a hole in my nose that freaks me out, and I know I have holes in my nose, it's a nose, but I cannot get a nose ring. Like, I will not ever, ever get a nose ring, but I love nose rings. Is that weird? So I feel like I can still follow my heart, but also keep my nose holeless, so. I don't know. I think it looks real. I'm not gonna be wearing this in every video. It's probably just gonna be in this video. I, I don't know. I just was feeling it with my red orange lip. I just put it on. And yeah, let's get started on this video. I have a new favorite foundation brush. I didn't think this day would ever come. The It Cosmetics Love is the Foundation Brush has been my favorite foundation brush for like two years now. And it's so funny because my new favorite brush is also from IT Cosmetics. I wouldn't say I love this one more than my Love is the Foundation brush, but I love them about the same and that's crazy to me. I just, I never loved a brush like that. This is one of the IT brushes for Ulta, so you could only get this brush exclusively at Ulta. But it's their Airbrush Full Coverage Complexion Brush, number 77. Pretty sure this is brand new. I just recently got an NPR and there's something special about this brush. I've never never really been into those flat top kabuki type of brushes. Colourpop has one. I can't grab it right now. <laughs> Colourpop has one. Sigma has one. I mean, they're very popular foundation brushes and people use them all the time, but for some reason I just always preferred something that wasn't as stiff or as flat. I don't know. But this one, this is a flat brush, but I don't know if it's the shape of it. It has like a really cool triangle type shape that just fits perfectly in every crevice of your face. The shape of this is amazing, but it's not as stiff as those other brushes. It's very, very soft, almost fluffy, and it honestly does give you the most full coverage foundation look possible. I kind of put it to the test. I did half of my face with my other favorite foundation brush, and I feel like this one gave me a more flawless, full coverage look. I don't know how it does it, but it does. Definitely check it out the next time you're at Ulta. I know it is a pricey brush. It cosmetics brushes are so expensive, but they are really good. Not all of them, but this one. This one is amazing. Okay, so last month I spoke about my favorite single shadow. It was the Bobbi Brown one in Heat Ray. I still use it all the time, but it kind of reminded me of my love for Max Woodwinked because I used to use Woodwinked on its own all the time, and it reminded me of that. So I pulled Woodwink back out of my collection, started using it again, and now I cannot stop, of course. This is the eyeshadow I have all over my lids. I've been using this as a one and done eyeshadow look. I have my face highlight on my inner corners, but this is literally the only thing on my eyes right now. And I love this because you can pack it on your entire lid and it gives you a really pretty soft golden bronze look, but you can get a fluffy brush and apply it in the crease as well. And it doesn't look weird. It's not like a very shimmery eyeshadow. It has a sheen to it, but it's not glittery or shimmery. It really just is like a glowy bronze satin finish. I feel like I don't have other eyeshadows that look exactly like this. Like, I mean, it's a bronze eyeshadow, typical. You can find similar shades in other palettes, but I feel like Woodwinked is special. There's something about the texture of it that I just, I don't know. I really love it. I've been using it almost every day, and it pairs so well with my Clev. Colourpop Lippy. I've been wearing this a lot this month as well. I've been wearing all of my lip collabs. I know that's really annoying, but I mean, I can't stop. I made this color for a reason. I love wearing these shades, so I feel like Woodwinked and this color just pair so nicely. It's so summery, so springy. I love it. So the Cali Contour from Smashbox has been my go-to contour blush 
kind of situation for the past few weeks because I've been traveling so much like I've been taking this with me I like it because I feel like I have everything I need in this one palette and it is so sleek I love the mirror when I was traveling I was using this mirror a lot to do my brows to do my face I hate holding a mirror I like having it like propped somewhere but it is a really great mirror besides the packaging like I said in my recent video I love every shade in this palette the only one I don't use that often is this one so it is really rare for me to like everything I like this shade I mix these two shades together to create a nice contour it's actually what I use on my face today to contour to bronze the whole skin I am wearing the new it cosmetics bye bye pores bronzer and I also have this blush on my face right now this is such a pretty blush it goes with every single makeup look cool tones warm tones it's so nice anyway I've been loving this palette it's great on the go and I feel like the formulas are really nice everything blends really well I've kind of been over face palettes like this like I'm over contour kits I'm just over all of it but recently I've been really really liking this one it kind of reminds me of my love for the Too Faced Coco contour kit do you guys remember how much I used to love that palette if you remember my love for that palette you've been around for a long long time Alright, so if you guys saw my what's in my makeup bag, my travel makeup bag, you would have seen all the colors I've been wearing recently all month on my lips. But I have something else to talk about. I actually threw this in my bag last minute and I'm in love with this. I've always liked this. There's something about traveling that really makes you put your makeup to the test, let me tell you. And this is the Maybelline Vivid Hot Lacquer Lip Gloss in the shade Tease. It's a very, very nude lip gloss, but it is stunning. This stuff is very sticky, very opaque. It's a lot. It's very intense, but I found that this lasted all day on my lips. Gloss usually fades. At least the glosses I'm used to, they don't really last that long on the lips. I applied my Tara lip liner from Maybelline and then I applied this on top and it lasted all freaking day. This is such an intense lip gloss, but it is so good. And if you've been looking for something that's sticky, that's going to last a long time on your lips, this is really good. But I actually posted a picture of me and my friend Melody on Instagram and I got so many questions about the lip I was wearing in that picture. It was just like a random picture and I didn't have that much makeup on but I had this lip color and it was funny because somebody asked me what lip I was wearing and I responded saying that I mixed but I didn't. That was actually a day that I didn't mix my lip color so I'm so sorry I gave you false information. This is what I was wearing on my lips. This is the Nude Sticks boho lipstick it's one of their magnetic matte lip colors and this is like my new favorite nude i like it because it's deeper than whisper it's deeper than traditional nudes i wear i like adding a bold lip color at least for me when i do a little bit in other places i like something bold on the lips but sometimes i still want to do nude and i feel like this is the perfect nude because it's it's deep enough for me to kind of look like a bold color but it's still a nude color does that make sense? I don't know. I've been loving Boho a lot. I have been loving Nude Sticks a lot, let me tell you, because my next product is also a Nude Sticks product. This is their Eyebrow Stylist Pencil and Gel, and I have mine in the shade... Oh, Ash Brown. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is definitely too ashy for my hair, so I don't really use the pencil part all that much unless I'm in a hurry or on the go. Because whenever I'm out the door and I'm leaving, this is the only thing I'll grab if I need to do my eyebrows like on the go. Because it comes with a gel, like an eyebrow setting gel in this product as well. So you have your angled pencil for your brows and then you have the gel on this side. This is one of those angled, kind of like square triangle type tips. I used to be really into these, but then I went back to my traditional brow with style. It's still a really good formula. If you're into this type of tip, you will love, that sounds weird, you will love this eyebrow pencil because the formula is really nice and it does last a long time on the brows. I just don't love this color. I need to get something that's not ash brown. Maybe it's just like a neutral, brown. I don't think ash belongs in in my life. Anything ashy. I dye my hair 7NA, which is 7 neutral ash, and it still comes out warm. I'm a warm gal. But anyway, the gel on this is what I'm obsessed with. This is, okay, you guys know how I feel about my ColourPop Brow Boss Gel, amazing. My Givenchy Gel, amazing. This is like super glue real super glue for your brows. If you want that feathery brow look, but you really want your hairs to stick up for real though, like for real, for real, this brow gel sticks them up. Make It makes them very hard actually. So if you don't like crunchy brows, you're not gonna like this. Like these are crunchy brows, but it's like glue. Like it's literally hairspray. When you go to touch your brow, it feels like hairspray. It leaves them very feathery, 
all freaking day and I don't always want that look but whenever I want them to last all day I've been using this and dude this really gets the job done I just noticed that when I set my brows with this gel my brows last longer throughout the day than when I don't even like the color underneath I don't know this is some heavy-duty freaking eyebrow gel it's insane and I really like it okay so that completes the makeup portion of this video the rest of the stuff is not makeup ah. I need to give a huge shout out so this. This is the Bumble and Bumble Pret a Powder Nourishing Dry Shampoo with Hibiscus Extract for dry or damaged hair. <gasps> this is my new favorite dry shampoo. I love this so much. I wouldn't say it's my like new, new, new fav, fav, favorite dry shampoo, but it might be. It, fr it freaking might be. I just recently purchased a big one on Sephora and another little one because I'm completely out of this. This is the best dry shampoo if you do have very dry hair because it doesn't leave your scalp very dry, but it does clean your scalp. I hate dry shampoos that I put it in my hair and I'm like, oh cool, that did nothing. This doesn't do that. This does leave you with a nice clean feeling to the hair but it almost feels nourishing. It's so strange. I totally understand what you mean. Like I didn't get you in the beginning, but I get you. It's amazing. And it also doesn't leave your hair with that white residue. And even though it doesn't look like it with all this white crap on this, it kind of goes on a little bit clear, like clearer than I'm used to. Batiste is like a super white dry shampoo. This one doesn't do it that bad. I just love how it makes my hair feel still clean, but soft. And the scent is really, really good on this. Like your hair smells really nice. I would highly recommend you checking this out if you have like damaged hair or your hair is really dry you have dry scalp but you still don't want to wash your hair that often throughout the week <laughs> I recently went on the just arrived section like about a month ago I think I've been using this for about a month now I saw this was available I bought it I've been using it ever since and I really 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 like this this is the Laneige eye sleeping mask for all skin this is amazing if you really need intense hydration and intense moisture underneath the eyes I've said this about a trillion times but I have very dry skin I'm only 26 and I swear I see my skin like I feel like my skin looks older than I am like I get really wrinkly here you know my smile lines like I just see I just see the dryness really working against me if you have oily skin I know it's frustrating to have to like stay matte all day and have to go through that but listen it's way better than having dry skin okay you look old fast when you dry that's just the way it is. I need to drink more water. Anyway, this is supposed to be an eye mask that you apply underneath the eyes like an eye cream and you leave it on overnight and it's really going to de-puff and hydrate the eyes. And yes, that's exactly what this does. My Holy Grail eye cream is still my Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Eye. That's the best for dark circles and to really remove the darkness. But it doesn't really hydrate or de-puff the eyes. So using this about twice a week, I have noticed a huge difference on my under eyes. They look so much softer, so much more hydrated, just like, just better. And it also has this really cool applicator that you just rub it on the um, under eyes, tap it in with your ring finger, and the coolingness of this little wand is also really awesome. Like. The whole experience is really, really nice. I've been loving this, and I had a feeling I was really gonna like it because their lip sleeping mask is my favorite lip mask ever. This little combo on your lips and on your eyes, woo, hydration city, it's amazing. And I just checked the Sephora website and this thing is sold out, so I'm sorry, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I've been wanting to talk about this deodorant for like four months in a row, and every time I sit down to film this video, I forget to grab it out of my bathroom. This is the paraben-free and aluminum-free deodorant. I've been on the hunt for one that doesn't make me smell like a man's dirty situation. I could never find a vegan deodorant or like an aluminum-free deodorant, I'm sorry, that didn't make me smell bad. They all just kind of worked for a few hours, but then at the end of the day, I smelled a little bit bad, you know, on my armpits. You know, they just weren't working for me. But when I discovered this, it was like the clouds opened up and yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I wanted to say, and God said, oh, I hate you alfalfa. But I realized that just, that didn't match with what I was saying. Anyway, this is the Native deodorant. It's from a brand called Native. I purchased this on their website. I tried out two different scents, this one and then a mint one. I do not like the mint one. It worked for a couple hours, like I said, but at the end of the day, I didn't, I didn't really like it. This one in coconut and vanilla, <gasps> guys, this is amazing. This smells so good and it leaves your armpits smelling that way the entire day. I went to Disney World and it was like 80 degrees, hot as 
okay? So freaking hot. I was there all day and I still smelled good. I still smelled good at the end of the day. That is unheard of with an aluminum free deodorant, at least for me. So when I smelled my armpits at the end of the day and I was like, man, I still smell nice and fresh. I was so blown away. I knew that was like the ultimate test and I just knew me and you, we're meant to be. We're meant to be together forever. I will never, ever, ever, well, never say never. I will not be using another deodorant until I can find something better. And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna find an aluminum free deodorant that's better than this. Coconut and vanilla keeps me nice and fridge. Okay, so I'm actually gonna give a quick shout out to the Glossier U perfume. I mean, that, that's the name of it. It just says. Glossier U, but I recently purchased this because one of you guys actually recommended it to me in one of my comments And I ran and purchased it. I didn't even know Glossier made a perfume, but when I got in the mail Yeah, I know I bought it without even smelling it. I'm, I'm a wild card light light But when I got in the mail, I did not like it like I did not like how it smelled I was like, you know what? It's nice. It's pretty but it's not for me but I, I just sprayed it on myself anyway, and I wore it throughout the day, and I got so many compliments on this damn perfume when I wore it that I was really, really shocked. I, like, 10 people asked me what I was wearing, and I was like, you can't be serious. I don't even like the smell. The fact that everybody liked it on me made me like it. Like, I grew to really like this perfume. And even now, when I smell it, I'm like, it doesn't smell like anything special. I don't know. It's very fresh. It does smell good. It does smell good. It just didn't blow me away, but... Apparently this works really well with my body chemistry and people really like how it smells on me But it just gives you a very fresh vibe like you're just walking through a spring like a Springfield Meadow like a meadow what it smells like a nice fresh bath No, not no not a bath. I'll leave the notes like the notes of this perfume for you right here if I can find them if I can find the notes, but I don't know. I've been using it a lot this month because everybody seems to like it on me Okay, and then the last product we want to talk about is this so I don't know if you guys have noticed but I haven't been adding heat to my hair even though this is a heat styling tool let me get into it I haven't been adding heat to my hair for a while now I have just been doing the whole natural thing because I really want to lay off la plancha like um, the my flat iron I don't know why I just said that in Spanish but I really want to lay off the flat iron even though I love straight hair I don't want to use it as much but from so many years of ironing my hair I mean I've been ironing my hair every single time I've washed it since the sixth grade Sixth grade, so do the math. That is years, years of flat ironing my hair. So obviously, my curls have really died out. Like, they do, n my hair does not get as curly, not nearly as curly as it used to in middle school or like when I was younger. So I've been having to use this, but I only use this on the hairs that frame my face. So I wash my hair like normal, do my curly hair routine, and then when my hair is completely dry, I'll go in with this curling iron, which is a tiny, skinny little curling iron, and then I'll just do the little hairs around my face. I feel like it makes a huge difference. I don't touch any of my hair in the back, so I just do the hairs in the front, and then I don't touch it until I wash my hair again. So I never retouch with this. I try not to add more heat than I need to. Like, for example, I, I it's been like a week since I washed my hair. Well, it's been like five days. I definitely need to wash my hair tonight. But I did the little curls around my face like five days ago, and I haven't retouched, I haven't touched up, which is why my hair looks really crazy today. But that's okay, I'm embracing the crazy. And I just really wanted to mention this because I've gotten so many compliments recently on my hair, like on my how my curly hair has been looking. And this I got off Amazon, and it was cheap. Um, I know that curling wands like on Sephora.com are like $200, but this is from a brand called her Styler, I don't know. Her Styler Baby Curls Mini Curling Iron. And I think it's like half an inch a uh, curling wand. It was 22 bucks. It's totally worth it because it minimizes the heat I put on my hair. So it's so worth it for me. I love it. I don't think you need to spend a lot on like a little curling iron like this. It does the job for me. But anyway, before I wrap up this video, I just want to give a cute little shout out to my bracelet. This is from Seal, my sister's jewelry line. I love that I can wear things like this now because I have a very tiny wrist. It's actually like abnormally small, I feel. The other day I was testing it against my 10 year old goddaughter's wrist and her wrist is thicker than mine. I was a little bit freaked out about that. It doesn't look like that on camera, but I have like abnormally tiny wrists and bracelets never fit me. I love that she has come out with these kinds of bracelets that you, that you just do this, like, you know, no matter how thick your wrist is, no matter how thin your wrist is, this little stopper thing is a freaking godsend. I love it. And I love anything that has to do with like the evil eye, the whole Madeo whole thing. I love it. So this is the little eye. And I just didn't, I don't even feel like I have something on my wrist. It's amazing. So I just wanted to give that a cute little shout out. I will leave my sister's jewelry website down below if you want to check it out. 
But anyway, guys, that completes this video. These were products I was loving in the month of April. I don't know. Hopefully, next month, I have more makeup products to include. I feel like this month was kind of boring, but it is what it is. I liked what I liked. Leave me a comment down below what you were loving in the month of April. What was your holy grail product this month? And if I haven't checked it out, maybe I will. But like I said, that completes this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. So the next product I want to talk about, I feel like I need, a, I need a snack. And it reminded me of that, so I pulled Woodwink. But yes, I've been loving that so much. It's really hot. Nose rings also stop you from being a booger picker which I'm a booger picker, so that helps.